بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope and pray that you all are doing well and you and your families are staying safe and healthy inshallah My name is Musira and I will be serving as your moderator for this hour I'm a young Muslims member from Alexandria Virginia and excited for you all to join us for this fascinating session. For those who might not know, Young Muslims is a division of ICNA and we're a national youth organization with chapters across the nation that create a safe and supporting Islamic environment for the youth where we stay connected to one another, participate in community service activities, and strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of our members also work together and hold our annual Young Muslims Conference in conjunction with the ICNA Convention every year, which would have happened this weekend, but subhanAllah, due to the pandemic, we weren't able to physically meet at the DC Convention Center. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and has still allowed us to gather together and take in the knowledge and practical tips provided to us by our Islamic teachers and Muslim professionals who graciously took time out of their schedules to be with us these past two days. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept them and reward them graciously. Ameen. And now an introduction to our first speaker who will be speaking on how families can be united during social distancing. She is currently an ICNA Sisters member and has been an active volunteer for the past 20 years. She works as a Muslim chaplain at Simmons University in Boston, Massachusetts. She has completed eight years of advanced Islamic studies program with a focus in Quranic tafsir and is actively conducting Tajweed and Quran classes for sisters and the youth. She currently serves as a member of Ikna Relief's Board of Directors, as well as our very own Young Muslims Board. She's a source of inspiration for many young Muslim sisters, including myself. So please give your complete and undivided attention to Sister Sumera of Sa'al. Jazakumullahu khairan. Sister Sumera? I uh, just need to make sure that Mike is connected, inshallah. Uh, Sister Samari, for speaking, unfortunately, we can't hear you. Um, if you can, please try unmuting, muting your mic to see if that works, inshallah. Oh, still can't hear you. Um, due to technical difficulty, we will move forward with. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I can hear you now. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Hauza billahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqtatam min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa marzukna attiba'a. Allahumma arina al-ba'atila ba'atila wa marzukna ajtinaaba. Allahumma alhimni rushdi wa aizni min shari nafsi. Ameen. Ya Rabbul Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is my honor that I am a part of this history making our very own ICNA symposium. And yes, as you said, we as a Muslim community are united. And yes, we, whenever we are faced with the challenges, we dissolve it, we unite, and alhamdulillah, there we are. Today, my topic is family united in social distancing. In the late 1940s, there was an obsession over conformity and following the norms of marriage. The men and the women, the two children, and the white picket fence. Life was simple. The father was the breadwinner and the mother was the homemaker. The family was one unit, more or less. However, as time progressed and we became an even more individualistic society with increased advancement in technology and pop culture, we must ask ourselves, does family still retain the sacred value it once had? The entertainment industry as well as social media has gripped our children by the soul and dug its claws into them. 
releasing its toxic poison so that it clouds their judgment, impairs their decision-making skills, and damages their mental well-being, and consequently their behavior. We all understand this, but what can be done? Let's remind or rather educate ourselves on how a strong family can rise up to any challenge per se nowadays crisis. One of the most striking features of a Muslim society is the importance attached to the family. The family unit is regarded as the corner store of a healthy and balanced society. The family unit is an important component of Islam and all elements of a family are given due significance from parents to children to spouses to kith and kin. The lexical meaning of Arabic word usra, which means family, is derived from the words denoting unity, closeness, and protection. The word refers to a group of people connected together through close ties that keep them together and maintain their unity. The importance of the family system stems from its significant role, namely the making of an individual who benefits himself and others. This calls for a much longer, deeper, and harder period of training. Preparing yourself only to care for, for yourself is not like preparing yourself to care for both yourself and others. Raising minds is definitely different from raising livestock. We need more training and experience. SubhanAllah, our religion Islam gives us gives father and mothers a great deal of responsibility for raising their children. It was narrated that Abdullah ibn Umar heard Prophet Muhammad saying, Kullukum ra'im wa kullukum mas'ula an ra'iyatihi. And it's a very long narration. Uh, Prophet and uh, the translation is each of you is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. The leader is a shepherd and is a sh is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock. The man is the shepherd of his family and he is responsible for his flock. The woman is the shepherd of her husband's flock, her, her, her husband's household and is responsible for her flock. The servant is a shepherd of his master's wealth and is responsible for his flock. And this hadith is muttafaqun alayhi. So Islam attaches great importance to the family for many reasons. And I will share some, some, some reasons with you. So the family gives rise to and provides a fertile ground for sound individuals. Within the family, children are nurtured by their parents who give them the love and tenderness. This phase can last more than 15 years as infants. Parents give their children the most tender love and care. As children and adolescents, they instill in them principles, feelings, and beliefs. And as youth, they guide them until they reach maturity. This mission equips children with the necessary knowledge to protect them from sins. Prophet Zakariya prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi la tadarni fardan wa anta khayrul barithin. He says, do not leave me hairless, my Lord, you are the best of hearers. And he also made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Rabbana hablana min ladunka dhurriyatan tayyiban innaka sami'u dua. O Allah, grant me by your own grace virtuous offspring. You are the hearer of all prayers. So the purpose of having a family is to have righteous, righteous offspring, not just any offspring family is the basic building block of a larger society which itself is formed from the total sum of all the families put together prophet muhammad sallam instructed us to be careful when choosing a spouse since children take after their parents siblings in the same family need to receive the same care and education properly to play an effective role in reforming society 
and eliminate injustices. So basically, family shapes individuals, both men and women, in the light of the Quran and Sunnah, and it builds values nourished by parental guidance, support, and encouragement. The family, the family raises competent or should raise i should say that the family should raise competent individuals to help build society through knowledge work promoting good and forbidding evil and we can also say amr bil ma'ruf or through amr bil ma'ruf wa nahi anil munkar in muslims or, or a muslim family should also focus on establishing model families to which others can look up and can evaluate. Families that follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and prove that Islamic teachings are not hard to achieve, but rather a tangible reality with real living example. This is by far the ultimate goal of any family as we recite in the Quran because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala instructs us to, to recite or to, to ask from Him. Surah number 25, Ayah 74. Our Lord grant us from um, among our wives and offspring comfort to our eyes and make us an example for the righteous. And the last purpose of a family in Islam is producing healthy children, not just the individual healthy children who will help their parents in their old age and pray for them after their death. Prophet Muhammad also said, when a human being dies, his work comes to an end, except for three things. Number one, ongoing charity. Number two, knowledge by which people benefit from. And number three, or a pious son who prays for him. And the hadith is in Muslim. So in Islam, it is paid a great deal of attention to implanting the principle of respect for fathers and mothers, taking care of them and obeying their commands until their death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you dutiful to your parents. If one of them or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor and the, in the, uh, Surah number 17, ayah number 23, and in the next part of uh, of the same surah, ayah 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us, وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحًا مِنَ الذُّلِّ جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِ And submit yourself before them in humility, out of compassion, and say, My Lord, be merciful to them as they have brought me up in my childhood. So in Muslim culture, akin to other traditional cultures, respect and esteem increase with age. Elderly parents are respected on account of their life experiences and their position within the family unit. The opportunity to attend the needs of one's parents in their later years is viewed as a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa further uh, emphasized on it. He said, may his nose be rubbed in the dust. May his nose be rubbed in the dust. And it's an Arabic expression denoting degradation. So when the when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked whom he meant by this, he said, the one who sees his parents, one or both, during their old age, but does not enter paradise by doing good to them. And then a man came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and asked his permission to go to battle. The Prophet asked him, are your parents alive? The man replied, yes. Then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi responded, then strive to serve them. So that means every single member of the Muslim family had an important role to play. So our job, so I will leave you with three points. Number one is togetherness. Number three is positive communication. And number three is kindness and respect with everyone at every occasion. May Allah, a house can become a home with the members take an initiative to love and care for each other. What you do for your kids and spouse is exactly how they will return the favor and learn lessons for life. It may be tough, but this life, this world is but 
one pit stop to our final destination. May Allah grant us all the Jannah and give us the ability to increase our spirituality and reconnect with our families instead disconnect. If we all work together to better our families, we can become a stronger Muslim community. We can make a difference in the world after this epidemic. This is not the end. It was the only beginning of new start and the ending we chose is up to us. Our a'mal, the way we chose to live our lives and raise our kids. Sister Sumera, especially for the final three uh, suggestions for every family member um, that's, you know, go, everyone's going through challenges currently, the pandemic. So inshallah, we just have to stay strong and united as a family and work towards helping one another, serving one another and caring for one another. So inshallah, we'll take all the examples you gave from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and move them forward. Um, on behalf of ICNA and all of its divisions, including YM, we'd like to thank you all for participating and supporting this first ever online symposium. We have close to 2,000 families that joined us. We hope that this has been beneficial, and we do thank the organizers behind the scenes who worked tires tireless to put together um, this uh, symposium with their wonderful teams, mashallah. Please be sure to keep all of them, all the organizers, the volunteers, and the speakers and their families in your du'as. I'm sure at the beginning of the symposium and possibly even now, most of you are worried, fearful, stressed, given the current state, um, worried about family, friends, co-workers, and our Muslim brothers and sisters around the subhanAllah. Some things are out of our control, but we have the ability to take this time of reflection and think about what we can do to change and improve ourselves and turn this hopelessness into an opportunity to apply the tips and advice we received from the scholars and the Muslim professionals you just heard from, especially to grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be as unified as possible uh, as an ummah, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi so throughout the symposium, I'm sure you have seen videos of ICNA Relief and Helping Hand and tips from our speakers on what we can do to help those that, those that, that are in most need. Please go to ikna.org slash donate, share some of the risks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each of us and share it with his organization that has many departments that are doing amazing work, mashallah. Um, and with that, the closing announcement, the ICNA convention team is still planning to hold a physical convention when the situation gets better later in the year. So please stay tuned for more details, inshallah. With that said, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, our families, and grant us strength and sabr during these trying times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant complete shifa to those that are sick and ill and shower us all with his mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the organizers and our wonderful speakers for sharing their knowledge and taking the time out to be with us these past two days. May Allah Panther increase all of us in knowledge and allow all of us to be steadfast in applying it and improving ourselves to spread the khair and to be outstanding Islamic members of our communities. Allahumma ameen. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa la'asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Illa al-ladhina a'amil al-salihat. Wa tawasaw bil-haqqi. Wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Please stay safe and healthy inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.